Man, my CD player won't play. Okay, I see why. CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays, and games, all optical media can get scratched up, either from improper storage or simply frequent use. You can find some game stores that will resurface those discs for a dollar or two each, but when you have as many discs as I do, that can be pretty expensive. So I find the thrifty option is the do-it-yourself route. But before I talk about what this unit can do, I want to talk about the kinds of damage that this unit cannot fix. The resurfacer works by polishing the polycarbonate layer at the bottom of the disc. Damage to the label, top lacquer coating, and the reflective surface cannot be repaired. To see if there is damage to the reflective surface, Hold the disc up to a light source and look for holes where the light is leaking through. If you see holes, then you have a problem that cannot be fixed by a resurfacer. Fortunately, CD players have built-in error correction, so small holes in the reflective layer may not cause a problem with the audio. However, larger holes or mini holes will cause playback issues. Also, if your CD has visible cracks, this type of damage cannot be repaired. Data on CDs is read from the inside out. Some CDs may have small cracks on the edge that are past any music data and will play fine, but using a resurfacer is not advised as stresses applied to the disc can cause the cracks to get larger, threatening playability of the disc. I purchased my JFJ Easy Pro new on Amazon, but this resurfacer can be found at jfjeasypro.com as well. You might also find a used one on eBay, but it may not have all the polish and accessories needed for disc repair. The basic kit comes with two buffing pads, two sanding pads, three coarse sanding discs, three fine sanding discs, spray cleaner, and a cleaning cloth. You can use this machine as a one-step device for light scratches or as a multi-stage device for deep scratches and gouges. The machine works by spinning either a polishing pad or a sander on a pocketed pad holder with a Velcro base. Optical discs are attached to the spring-loaded arm attached to the lid. As the polishing pad turns, the optical disc turns with it and gets polished in the process. A red button near the back of the lid prevents the motor from running when the lid is open. The unit has an on-off switch and four buttons on the front for timing options ranging from 10 seconds to 2 minutes. For light scratches, I don't use the sanding pads. I place two dabs of white solution on each side of the polishing pad and wipe it into the pad with my finger. For a brand new polishing pad, I use more white solution, making sure that the entire pad is covered in a thin layer of white. You can apply the polish either before or after you insert the pad into the JFJ unit. I use the one minute setting for the white solution, then look at the disc. If I still see scratches, I will add a little more white solution to the pad and run it for a minute longer. The pad dedicated to the white polish should only be used with the white polish, and the pad dedicated to the blue polish should only be used with the blue polish. My blue polish is getting a little old, and the liquid is starting to separate, so I gave it a shake and put a little more on the pad. I run the blue polish from one to two minutes after the white polish, removing the disc, then wiping it with a clean rag. If a disc has a deep scratch or gouge, then the polishing pads aren't enough and you need to use the sanding discs. I don't have any discs with deep gouges, so for this demonstration, I will intentionally damage a disc and see if I can repair it. I will only run the sanding disc conservatively. The self-adhesive backing on my sanding disc has come loose, so I'm going to apply a little bit of glue. You can use a spray adhesive if you have it, I just didn't have any. I recommend starting with the 10 second setting when using the coarse sander. I would then extend to 20 seconds if it still looks damaged. Very deep gouges may require a more aggressive approach with longer sanding times. 
Check the disc after each sanding session to see if the gouges are removed. After sanding, you'll notice that the disc has a very dull surface and may have swirl marks. After I'm finished with the coarse sander, I will run the fine sander 20 seconds to smooth the disc out. After using the fine sander, I will then run the white solution for a full two minutes, followed by the blue solution for a full two minutes, so the disc is as smooth as possible. Don't be surprised if the inside of the unit gets messy in the process of polishing discs. The high RPM motor will end up slinging polish all over the inside of the unit. When the polish on the inside of the unit builds up, I'll wipe it out. But there's really no point in trying to keep it spotlessly clean as it'll splatter more polish each time you use it. The white polish will wear down the polishing pad faster than the blue polish. But the blue polish can sometimes create a waxy layer on the top of the pad that I would rinse off once that wax builds up too much. Pads can last until they reach near the pocket of the pad holder, but I generally replace them when they are about half worn down. Pads should be removed from the unit when not in use, as pressure from the arm will warp the pads if they are left in the polisher with the lid closed. Warped pads should never be used when polishing discs. Over hundreds of uses, I've had three discs crack in my machine. This is rare, but can happen, especially with older, brittle discs. Both the white and the blue polish can separate over time and when exposed to extreme temperatures. With the blue polish, you can shake it up and still use it, but remixing does not fix the white polish. Once the white polish separates, it stays separated and should be replaced. I avoid buying the white solution in bulk because of this. The instructions suggest only using JFJ polish and pads, but I found aftermarket products that work with the JFJ polisher from Disc Magic. I've provided a link to both JFJ and Disc Magic in the description. Also, I have read online that some folks have used car polish and wax in these machines, but I do not recommend this, as it seems best to use polish designed for optical disc repair, and car polish can often be as expensive as these CD solutions. If you enjoyed this video or others in the Thrifty AV series, please like and subscribe. Also, I've recently started a Patreon account under the name Thrifty AV. Any pledge is appreciated, and a little goes a long way at thrift stores and flea markets. Thank you for watching.